Welcome back guys. In this video lecture, we're going to talk about the system of particles, how to deal with the case of system of particles in kinetics, all right? So I know guys that if I have a body, then I should draw the free body diagram of this body in a certain uh, uh, coordinate reference. And then I can say that the sum of forces external, externally applied to this body will be equal to m times the acceleration of this body. Now, what if I have a system of particles? So this is not one body. I have a system of particles and I want to write the equation of motion extended to include the system of particles. And basically, it's very important to do this because this could be applied to the fluid, right? Or to the gas system that is composed of system of particles or even to the motion of solids. So how, guys, to prove that even if I have the system of particles like in this figure here, I can say that the sum of forces that, uh, that are ex uh, exerted externally to this system of particles will be equal to the mass times the acceleration at the center of mass of the system of particles. So in order to do this, guys, I'm going to take one particle, and this will be particle that has an index of R. So any particle that uh, uh, any particle in this system of particles. I'm going to take this particle as now my I free body diagram. All right. So what are the forces exerted on this small particle? In fact, guys, I'm going to now separate the external forces on this particle from the internal forces. So I'm going to say that big Fi, and I mean by big Fi, this, uh, 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 this is the resultant external force on this particle. So this is big Fi. Plus small Fi, and I mean by small Fi, the resultant internal forces uh, the resultant of the internal forces exerted on this particle because in fact this particle belongs to a system of particles then this particle will be subjected to some internal forces exerted from uh, the other particles of the system on this particle itself all right so big fi plus some fi on this particle as if i'm separating this particle from this system of particles is equal to the mass of this particle i times the acceleration of this particle i. How can I move from this equation to this equation where a j is the acceleration of the center of mass of this system right here? In fact, guys, what I'm going to do now is to apply this equation for all the particles of the system and then sum up all these equations. So if I do the sum up of all these equations, what I have uh, uh, to obtain is this equation. Sum of all the external forces on this system of particles plus the sum of all fi and what is fi small fi is the internal force between these particles so since i'm doing the sum of all the equation of motion on all these particles then i'm gonna have this equation plus the sum of mi ai of course where i is going from Particle number one to particle number n. So it's all about the system of this uh, of these particles. I know, guys, from action reaction that the sum of F i, the sum of internal forces, is equal to zero. So that's why, guys, this sum of internal forces will vanish. Okay, because in fact, the sum of the internal forces inside the system is equal to zero, okay? Then I'm gonna have this equation. Sum of all the external forces is equal to the sum of mi ai. How I can move from this equation to this equation? So the first term here 
agrees with this term, right? So this is the sum of external forces, and this is also the sum of external forces on the system of particles. Now, what about this term? In fact, guys, I know that the center of mass is defined using this equation. What is the position of the center of mass? In fact, Rg is equal to the sum of Mi Ri over the sum of mi. Now, what is the sum of mi? I'm going to assume that the sum of mi is equal to m, which is basically the mass of the system. All right? If I derive this equation twice, the first derivation will give me the velocity, the second derivation will give me what? It will give me the acceleration. I'm going to end up with this equation. m times ag is equal to the sum of m i a i right so this will be my equation of the acceleration of the center of mass so if I substitute sum of m i a i from this equation by m a g I'm gonna have this equation sum of forces is equal to mag all right so even if i have a system of particles i can find out what is the mass of this system of the whole system I'm, I'm, i can find out what are the external forces on the system of particles and what is the acceleration of the center of mass and i can directly apply newton's second law so this is also guys from for the system of particles i'm gonna end my lecture today by uh, Advising you also to go over a review on the normal and tangential coordinates. So go uh, uh, for a review on uh, uh, the acceleration in normal and tangential coordinate. So don't forget, guys, that I can have 8 in curvilinear motion. I can have 80 a n, but a b is equal to zero, and this means that sum of f t will be equal to m a t, sum of f n will be equal to m a n, and sum of f b is equal to zero. So these are the equations of motion in curvilinear and normal direction. And same goes, guys, to the case of cylindrical coordinates. So in this case, I have uh, uh, three directions, the radial, uh, uh, the uh, uh, theta direction, as well as Z direction. And of course, guys, I know what is the equation of AR from uh, the kinematics chapter, chapter 12. I know what is the equation of A theta. I know what is the equation of AZ. So I can substitute these equations in the equations of motion, and then I can do the sum of forces. All right, guys? Uh, next week, we're going to start solving problems on this chapter. Thank you very much.